Hello and welcome again. In the previous video, we mentioned that for the Relfan cipher or zigzag cipher, when we uh, have our key, our key should be less, strictly less than the number of letters or characters in the plain text. And there's a reason for that. The reason is because if you choose a key that is bigger, uh, something not desirable is going to happen. So I'm going to show you an example where the key is larger than the number of characters in the plain text. And so we see how the zigzag cipher is going to work in that case. So let's look at this example here. So I have the example uh, encrypt the message hello, very simple message using the relevant cipher with a key of six. Now hello here, if you count the number of characters, of course it has five, five characters. So my plain text uh, will have five characters and my key is six. So key in, and the key in this case will be bigger than the number of characters. And you will see in a second why is that not desirable, something that you don't want. So the number of characters in the plain text, as I mentioned, is a five, because it's the message hello. So we, because we are using the zigzag cipher, we always make a table and the table should have uh, some rows and the number of rows is equal to the key. So the key here is six, so we're gonna have six rows. And the number of columns is gonna be equal to the number of symbols in my plain text, which in this case is five, because it's the word hello, so I have five. So the plain text is five. I already uh, draw the table. So the table has how many rows? Six rows, five columns. So those are the six rows and five columns. So one, two, three, four, five, six rows. And the columns you can see this is five. One, two, three, four, five, right? Now, what do we do with encryption when we are using a zigzag? So what you do is you start with this corner right here and diagonally go down and then you encrypt the message by reading the rows. So let's start with that H. So H will go here. That'll be H. Oh, let me choose another uh, color here, H. So it'll be H, remember diagonally, E, L, L, O. So that's the message. And this is happening because the key is bigger than, than the uh, number of symbols in my in my plain text. So if I were to encrypt this message, remember what do you do? You read the rows. So if you read the rows, you say H, E, L, L, O. So the cipher text, in this case, if you read the rows, the cipher text, reading the rows from top to bottom, from top to bottom, left to right, will be H, E, L, L, O. And you see actually what happened there, right? Uh, hello. So the cipher text is equal to the plain text. That's not a cipher. That's that's nothing. And the cipher text is that's not a cipher text. That's just the plain text. So the plain text is equal to the cipher text. So this is as insecure as you can get it. Um, that's gonna happen every single time you have a key that is bigger than the number of characters in the zigzag cipher. So if you follow the algorithm of the zigzag cipher, as we describe it in the videos you better have your key less than the number of characters that you have in the uh, in the plain text. Because if otherwise, if the key, like in this case, the key is six, there, key is six, and the characters are five, when you encrypt it, you actually are not encrypting anything, the plain text, the cipher text would be exactly the same as the plain text. So whenever you encrypt something with the uh, zigzag cipher, Always the key should be small because you want to send messages. Um, so the mess, the key should be some, some always a small number. So as I mentioned before, the key should never be like a thousand. It's too much. So that means your your plain text should be more than a thousand symbols, uh, counting repetitions, of course. Um, so that's not that's that's not something that you want. So that's why the reason you want your key less than the number of characters. Now, I can go ahead and talk about uh, how to crack this cipher, and, but I'm not going to do it. The only thing I'm going to mention is this. Uh, because we have this property here, that the key, it has to be less than the number of letters in the plain text. 
that reduces the amount of keys I have available for me. So for example, if I'm sending a message that is 10, uh, 10 letters or 10 symbols long, the attacker in the case and the attacker will be Eve. She knows if I'm using the six act cipher, she knows that the key should be uh, less than 10. So it's very easy for Eve to actually crack the message because he can do a brute force attack. He can try all the keys, meaning he can construct all possible tables. And with all possible tables, he will make sense out of the cipher text. So this is, as you can see, this is not secure either because the, what we call the key space, or so the number of possible keys is small because of this limitation. The limitation is that the key has to be smaller than the number of letters in the plain text. So if that is the case, then my key should be small. So being the key small means that I have few choices for key. So brute force attack will actually work for this kind of cipher. So that's the last thing I wanna mention about this cipher. So in the next video, we're gonna do an overview of actually all the ciphers we cover so far, and we enter into more a little bit more interesting ciphers uh, for the next uh, topic. So I'll see you in the next uh, video.